Hi, I'm Dr. Vincent Ho. I'm a gastroenterologist and a senior university lecturer. I'm also the gut doctor. Hi there, and welcome to our very first video, which will introduce you to the digestive system and covers the story of how food turns into poo. The story of how your food ends up as poo is an amazing one. The food that you eat is broken down, firstly by chewing and mashing in the mouth. You fashion a little ball from this food called a bolus with the help of the tongue. A little bridge called the epiglottis closes over to protect your airways so that food doesn't go into your lungs every time you eat. During swallowing, the food bolus is pushed back down to the entrance of the food pipe, also known as the esophagus. Starting in the esophagus, an amazing action called peristalsis takes place. Think of peristalsis like the movement of a worm crawling on the ground. Peristalsis is powered by muscles inside the gut itself and is the force that enables the food to travel from the esophagus to the stomach and all the way down to the anus. Now the stomach is a J-shaped moving container full of acid. The folds of the stomach that we can see are called rugae. As the food bolts arrives in the stomach, it causes the stomach to stretch and a lot of enzymes and acid are produced. These help to break down or digest food. Once eating starts, the lower part of the stomach is constantly churning like a blender and most of the food is broken down in tiny particles, no more than three millimeters. The small size of the particles allow it to easily pass into the small bowel. This pulpy acidic mash enters the very long windy tube known as the small bowel. The mash is digested with the assistance of a flat pear-shaped gland known as a pancreas and bile. The pancreas produces a number of enzymes that are really good at breaking down proteins into small amino acids. Bile is a yellow-green thick, sticky fluid produced by the liver and acts like a detergent to break down big clumps of fat into little fat particles. The small bowel also contains enzymes that help digest carbohydrates into simple sugars like glucose. We're traveling through the small bowel now. And yes, as you can see, it's very long indeed. In an average adult, it measures around six meters in length. Right now, it feels like we're almost in a roller coaster. Amino acids, little fat particles, and simple sugars can travel through the cells lining the small bowel and into the bloodstream. Now this process is called absorption. It means that nutrients can get to different parts of the body where they are needed. The small bowel absorbs almost all food nutrients and minerals such as iron. Any food that is not digested by the small bowel, such as fiber, enters a large bowel or colon. In the colon, a lot of water is taken away from the food, making it more firm. A lot of bacteria is present in the colon, and after processing food, they can produce gas and short-chain fatty acids. Short-chain fatty acids are valuable nutrients for the cells lining the colon. The indigestible dried food product now becomes waste. It gets stored in the last part of the colon, known as the rectum, and is ready to leave the body as poo during a bowel motion. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll take the discussion further in my website, gutdoctor.com, where there's an interactive blog covering different aspects of the gut, and you can ask questions and share your stories. Our next video will cover how vomiting occurs. If you want to learn more about the gut, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and you can check out our social media links down below. I'm Dr. Vincent Ho, and I'll see you at the next video.